I will be thrilled to introduce our next speaker, everyone. Our second talk of the day is by David Sudia. His charity is Feeding America. And <laughs> I got kicked off the podium. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> His, I know. <laughs> His, uh, David's charity is Feeding America. Uh, you'll find a link for that and all of the other charities mentioned today in the Discord later. And his favorite cartoon is Animaniacs, which I cannot support enough. I am a big fan. <laughs> and his talk today is called, If You Can Wait Six Months, You Should. So everyone, please give a warm Animaniacs-style welcome to David. It's time for Animaniacs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh... I'm just going to assume you can hear me because everyone else has asked if you can hear them and everyone said yes. So thanks for having me. I am super excited about this. And uh, yeah, I, I'm going to give a little talk here and see how this goes on Animal Crossing. Uh, yeah, Katie, thank you for calling out how difficult it is to play Switch and like go through slides. So I've got one hand here and one hand here and we'll uh, do, our, do our best here. So yeah. My title, talk is titled, If You Can Wait Six Months, You Should. Uh, this is obviously not you know, for your MVP, for your startup. You should probably get that out the door as fast as possible. Uh, see if you have market fit. But this is more around uh, infrastructure and operations kinds of concerns. So who am I? My name is Dave Sudia. I'm a DevOps engineer at GhostBotCheck. Uh, I put that in quotes because we actually changed our team name recently to be Cloud Operations because that was the best worst name we could think of so we didn't call ourselves DevOps anymore because you know it's a process not a team and we were literally calling our team that um, so we changed it. Uh, I, I always have a little bit of imposter syndrome when I talk at any kind of conference because it's usually like here is the person who wrote this amazing tool and then I come up and I'm like hi I'm a guy who uses that tool uh, and I, I'm just I'm a DevOps engineer I work on a team i run operations for a mid-sized startup uh, with a couple other people. And we're a pretty small team. And we're usually just trying to glue as many great tools that other companies have written uh, and shared with the world uh, together to put a nice platform together for our developers. You can't see it, but I, I've, when I originally started or came into this, I thought the Zoom stream was also going to be live. And so I coordinated my real life outfit with my in-game outfit. And I just had to tell everyone that because I'm sad that you can't see it. So sell that fruit or plant it. This is kind of the question, right? Early on, you get, you, I, my island started with oranges. You come on and you think like, OK, oh, great. I got cherries on this island. Or I went and visited my friend's island. And now I can make huge bank or I could plant these and I could have huge bank in a little bit. And that that one of the things I really like about Animal Crossing is that it encourages you to wait for things and to take a little bit more time and uh, and be patient with things. And that's how I feel right now in the ecosystem that we're in, in, in the whole DevOps space, is that there's so many things coming out so fast and um, and it's really tempting to like jump on them and start using them really quickly. And a lesson I've learned over and over again is that it just pays to wait for a little bit. I, I'm giving this talk basically because every other talk I've given, I end up saying this thing at the end. And, and then I felt like it was worth just kind of expanding into a whole thing. So let me, let me share a tale of, of many envoys. Um, about two and a half years ago, I was working at a company. We had a. I was a uh, started as a there as a QA engineer, then moved into application development while I was there. And we were working with this microservice stack that was only like seven services deep. Um, I, I've seen. I've actually seen in a sales pitch from Lightstep. Look at this thing from Lyft, where there's this single call hits like seven hundred microservices, and I'm like, whoa, that's that's big. Uh, but this was my experience at that point. It was, if you couldn't hit one service, if your request was dying somewhere, then you would 
exec or SSH onto an instance, exec into a container, try to curl the next service down and, uh, and then discover that you hadn't installed curl in that container because that's smart to do because you shouldn't have curl in your containers. And then you'd have to redeploy the whole thing through your chain with curl in it because your security network, you know, your network's closed off. So you can't just install curl in that moment. And uh, yeah, it was a huge pain. So I'm, you know, looking around for tools to use and I find Envoy and I think, oh, this is going to solve all our problems. It just, you've got tracing, you get all this observability built right into the, to the system. We don't have to change our app code. This is going to be brilliant. So I spent 11 weeks writing our discovery services because this was back when the only thing that was available was the actual like API spec. There was no deployable uh, discovery services. And right about the time I was wrapping them up, they deprecated all the APIs I'd just written these discovery services for and released the new V2 gRPC based API spec. And I started rewriting them. Um, and then, you know, while the, all this is going on, I hear about this incredible new project coming out, Istio. And it's, it, Istio just seemed like it was coming to my rescue. It seemed like it was going to be this incredible thing that abstracted away all the problems I was having with Envoy, which was abstracting away all the problems I was having with microservices. And it was going to be just this thing you could deploy, and it did all the Envoy configuration for you, and it deployed Jaeger, and it deployed Prometheus for you. Oh, this is just so incredible. It's going to be, it's going to be great. It's also super complex. And you may not need every one of those components. So, and, and deploying Istio itself at that time seemed like it was going to be really heavyweight and, and de getting it out there and managing it. And then now there's this whole extra set of YAMLs you have to learn on top of all the other YAMLs you've already learned. And so, you know, it, it, uh, in this period of time for about a year, it always felt like you were just kind of trading one kind of level of complexity for the next. So about another six months to a year passes, and I see Linkerd. Oh, this is great. This is a service mesh that's a little light, little, little more lightweight. It has everything we need. Not much we don't, except we do want distributed tracing support. So that doesn't really support that yet. So and and until we get, you know, until until that it has that, it's not really worth getting things out. And and I'm in a new company at this point, and we're we're sort of early in the microservice game at this company, and we don't we don't really need a service mesh. It would help, but but it's not super necessary yet. So about six months passes between me starting to follow Linkerd and a release that supports distributed tracing. And now I go, okay, great. This is, this is gonna be exactly what we need. Uh, now it's got everything we need, nothing we don't, super lightweight. You can deploy it with a CLI command. And I, and I think they made this release at KubeCon. And so I'm, in, I'm at KubeCon and I discover this. And about six hours after I discovered that, uh, someone told me about this tool called Superglue, and su what's now called Service Mesh Hub, I learned after trying to Google for it. Um, and Superglue is, was a tool that is a CLI command that allows you to deploy Istio and Linkerd and probably other ones by now um, with a command and like deploy them, test them out, take them down. And so in about two years, it took <laughs> someone in Twitch says super glue is clearly the better name. I agree. Um, in about two years, it was about how long it took for service meshes to go from write your own service implementations to a one line version manager where you could just deploy Istio using super glue in various versions, try them out, take them down. No, I don't really like that. Well, let me deploy Linkerd. Actually, let me see what it would be like if you deployed both at the same time. And and that to me is just incredible. It's this, you know, there's this incredibly fast pace of, of new things coming out all the time. I started following Cloud Native Computing Foundation about three years ago, and it now has more graduated projects than the total projects it had when I started following it. And so the lesson that I have taken out of all of this is if you can wait six months, you should. And again, not from a, a business perspective and a feature perspective necessarily, but from an infrastructure perspective. And, and, and I think, again, this is from my perspective as a consumer of these things. You know, I do build things, but, but not these things. And, and as a consumer, you know, I'm always looking for, I, like, I always see these tools and I think, oh my God, that thing is so incredible. I need that right now. 
And then I have to stop and ask myself, but do we need it right now? Or would it just be really nice? Would it, does it just, or would it just be really exciting? Is it just really cool? Because there's a huge difference between you absolutely have to have it and you need it right now. One day I'm going to have this robot hero on my island. And I remember the intense disappointment I had when buying the recipe and discovering that it required lots of gold plus other things that required gold that I don't even have the recipes for. And, and man, I want that robot hero, but, but I don't need to have it right now. I'm, I, I can wait. I can wait for things to, to get easier and become better. Good structure, infrastructure is also an MVP. You know, the thing I've learned is to not, yeah, comrade Evie, I really want it to. Uh, one of the things I've learned is to not chase tools, to determine requirements, to find the simplest tools that meet them. And if something isn't a hard requirement, wait on it. And wait on it, not just because it's going to save you the time of doing the thing right now, but because I can guarantee that in six months, doing that thing will be twice as easy as it is today. Because there are people at companies with lots and lots of VC money that have teams to build things uh, or that are just really successful, like Heroku, call it to Coldwater, because uh, we're using build packs now. Because for the last three years, we've been writing our own Docker files. And now I don't have to because we can just run on Heroku build packs. On the flip side, and to that point, you know, we've been using Kubernetes in production for 20 months. And these are things that have appeared since we started. Affordable places to send Prometheus metrics. Helm 3. Uh, our CD platform rolled out a whole new uh, version of that's better supported uh, Kubernetes. One of the major cloud providers rolled out Kubernetes support. There are tons of generally available GKE features that I really wish existed 20 months ago, because um, that's where that's where we run things as GKE, and and all of these things I wish existed when we started. But for us, it was worth it to start on Kubernetes 20 months ago, despite these things not existing, and to choose the things that we have to hand roll. There are still things that don't really exist. Vendors that support open tracing that are definitely gonna stay in business longer than your trial with them, because there are lots of places that are starting. Um, but in the last not quite two years, we've started with uh, companies that <laughs> were trying to jump on the bandwagon of, of you know, cloud native uh, observability that went out of business before we could even get through our, our trial with them. Um, it's someone, uh, there's been an extensive conversation about how difficult I am is in, uh, in the discord. And that's right here. It's like, there's still no really real great solution for that. But was, should we be waiting for all these things to exist before we even, you know, start? No, the, we've gotten benefits out of out of these things. So sometimes MVPs are rough. You acknowledge that they're gonna be rough. You acknowledge that there are some things that you will have to, to slog through and build, but, but you can also know, and you can go out there and, and go on the grand adventure of jumping around on a stick, but you can know that bridges are coming. I can guarantee you that for any problem you have right now in operations, there's probably someone at a more well-resourced organization that is building some incredibly easy, efficient, amazing way to do the thing that you're doing and, and wishing that you had. So the last piece of advice for me here is, oh man, I don't know who that, Cor and Cowie, I don't know who that animal is. Unfortunately, this is not my island. Um, the last piece here though, is to always keep your eye on the horizon because the first thing I do when anyone at, when any engineer at my company asks me, hey, can we do X? I say, I have no idea. The last time I read about that was three months ago. It could be possible now. And I go and I reread documentation and I reread through, you know, I re-Google everything. There are tools that we use every day in production where, and we have like vendor contracts for some of them, but they're these very fast moving open source projects 
Uh, I'll call it one of them is is Ambassador, which is an API gateway that is, that is sort of a wrapper around Envoy, and and we've been using it since like 0 0.3 something, and it's now 1.4 or something, and we're still stuck like in implementation details from 18 months ago because I haven't had time to go reread their docs and learn about all the new stuff it can do, and whenever I learn about any of this, it's a total surprise. So, because it's moving so fast, wait the six months, when the, and about every six months, regardless of someone asking me about it or not, I go back and I, I reread stuff. I go back and look at what version uh, changes have come up. I read change logs because there's just cool things that I didn't even know that I wanted or, or, or needed that someone's implemented and I see it and I see the promise of it and go, oh, wow, okay, great. This is a cool thing that's come out that I didn't even know was coming. So you have to always have your eye on the horizon. This was a short talk. It'll give more time for someone else to go over. Uh, I'm at the develop Nick uh, in most places. I, I'm only gonna look at Twitter if someone DMs me. So if you wanna get me there, DM me. What usually happens is I ignore it for a long time and then I give one of these talks and someone says, your Twitter's blowing up. And I'm like, oh yeah. Um, and uh, I'll be in the Discord and if there's any questions that have come up, I'm happy to answer them now. We have one very important question, which is what is your favorite Animaniacs bit? Oh man, that has to be the country song. Oh, oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I still sing it. Yeah, and they did, a, they did an updated version not too long ago. What? Yeah, Hold because on. a lot of those countries don't exist anymore or have changed. And so they did a, the, the voice actor did an updated one. There we go. Surprise. I'm going to have to look for that now. <laughs> look that up. We have a real question, too. I mean, a more technical question. They're all real questions. You're all, thank you for submitting questions. Uh, if we all wait six months before adopting the new Shiny, who finds and fixes the bugs that early adopters will hit? That's a great question. I would say, you know, we've been early adopters on things. We're early, we were, I, I don't know that we're early adopters on Kubernetes, but I feel like to, to a certain extent we were. And, and that's just played out in the fact that we've been waiting so long for some of these tools to, to be supported by other people and stuff. And that kind of goes to the, the flip side side where it's like, if, if you need something right now, maybe it's worth it to start writing those discovery services on your own for us. I think uh, a specific example of that is Ambassador. Like we were very early users of Ambassador. We, uh, I think they had like four people on that team when we started using it and we've given them roadmap, uh, roadmap feedback. And, um, and I say that we're way behind on knowing what the cool new features are because we were such early users of, of early features. Um, so it's more about, you know, to the MVP idea of, figuring out what your essentials are. And if your essentials are something that you need right now, but it's still early and the thing isn't polished, use the early non-polished thing. It's really about scoping down what you need to the, to the bare minimum of what you need to get a, a, a well-operating secure platform out there. Um, and I say secure because I'd be embarrassed going after Ian if I didn't. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, it's not like never adopt, be an early adopter. It's more like very carefully pick and choose the things that you're an early adopter of. Um, with Kubernetes, we made a long-term bet. We actually moved off Heroku because we just kind of got too big for that platform. Mm -hmm. And, and we could have gone to, you know, auto scaling groups, but we decided to sort of future proof ourselves as much as possible, knowing that there'd be some pain with that. And, and the pain has sort of been, we're having to run our own Prometheus. We don't really have the capacity to, to do figure out long-term storage and all this stuff. And at the time, um, you know, support for Prometheus metrics, and I'd say still to a large extent, support for Prometheus metrics is second class and ridiculously expensive um, in, a, in a completely useless way. Uh, but there are now companies coming out that are, are orienting around Prometheus metrics as a first class citizen mm -hmm. and and yeah. we can export them in an affordable way so so we had that early pain now there's finally support for it yeah um so yeah it's just about picking and choosing what's the most valuable thing for you to be an early adopter of 
So maybe there's a, there's a part two to this talk, which is how do you choose what's valuable? Yeah, totally. Right. All right. Um, I'll do that on the next one. <laughs> yeah. You know, when we have uh, animal crossing part two <laughs> yeah. and uh, I have, I have a question. Do you think that um, the way, the way that you make those decisions, like, is it largely affected by the size of your team, the size of the company or just like, or resources, not as it relates to necessarily the size of the company? Um, yeah. I mean, I think resources, right. I mean, like larger companies are going to have more resources, I've, which it can be good and bad. It's, mm -hmm. it's good in that you can do more. Um, in the speaker Q and a, I responded to Ian with like, yeah, what, what, what about security tips for people who aren't new to DevOps, but like, I don't have a security team to go ask what I should be doing. Right. right. Um, so, so now I'm just going to DM Ian all the time. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, but I think the flip side is as a small team. So, and for reference, you know, I am, we are the DevOps team. Uh, I like you how you use quotes with it. I was just about to say, you can't see it. I, there's no reaction for, for air quotes in Animal Crossing. I it's okay what in it. addition uh, to Animal Crossing it would yeah, be? Yeah, someone should make that. Um, so I, I think the flip side is, you know, my team is two people with maybe like with a manager who used to be more of an IC and now is really kind of like 0.1 or 0.2 IC. Mm -hmm. and, and we, because of that, we have to make, these decisions we can't yeah. just go out and you know spin up teams to do all the things yeah. and, and so i think there's also a strength in that and that it forces us to be focused um but yeah i like, like i said at the beginning of this you know i kind of talk from the perspective of i'm i'm we're, i'm at a a mid-sized company with a tiny team and yeah. we have to uh i am very much a consumer of these things and have to be very picky about what we consume that's fair one last question david are there any features you see on the horizon for different services that you can't wait to use or anything you like dream of being developed? Oh man, that, uh, outside of air quotes a, and animal crossing. Yeah, no kidding. Um, <laughs> let me, I'm going to, I'm going to think of, I want to give a good answer for that and off uh -huh. the top of my head. So I'm going to post that in the speaker Q and a channel. That's perfect. Everyone. I would like you to thank David for his talk and his time. Thank you so much. It was so good. Thank you. And thanks for putting this together. It's, it's so amazing. Oh, we're having so much fun. <laughs> Everyone furiously clap for David as I take over the podium.